On December 29th, 2023, I received an email from YouTube. Your channel is no longer eligible to monetize. I took the news in stride. What the f- What followed was three days of trying to get more information on what had happened and trying to go through the appeal process. And thankfully, my appeal was approved. Hooray! But those three days, I didn't really know what I was doing. They were filled with a lot of anxiety and uncertainty, and not just for me. I made a couple of community posts about it and even revived my Twitter account to let people know what was going on. Which, by the way, your positive thoughts were all very comforting and encouraging for me. A lot of my friends who are also YouTube creators helped to signal boost me publicly and supported me privately. I hope that this will be a way for me to pay that kindness forward by making a video about how the process worked for me. Maybe it can help someone handle it in the future. So the process all started with this notification on my YouTube studio page. After reviewing your channel using a combination of automated systems and human reviewers, we found that it does not follow YouTube's channel monetization policies. The policy in question, reused content. And if I wanted to appeal it, I'd have to make a whole appeal video. I wasn't given any specific details about how my content violated YouTube's policy about reused content, but I was given a little checklist of do's and don'ts. Examples of what's not allowed to monetize include short videos you compiled from other social media websites, clips of moments from your favorite show edited together with little or no narrative, and content uploaded many times by other creators. If you see my videos, I think it's pretty clear that they don't match anything near this description. And I was really upset, I was. I cast a downer on what had been a very exciting month on my channel. One of my videos really went wild. In fact, over a third of my subscribers right now joined just in the last month alone. On top of that, I had earned over $500. I already have that money earmarked for something I'm going to be doing very soon. Not next video, but the next next video after that. And now I was afraid I wasn't going to get that money I earned. December had been a great month. And then this happened. That was deflating. It was upsetting. And they went looking for answers. I reached out to Google support via chat and talked with someone there. But unfortunately, they didn't have any concrete information to offer me. I reached out to Team YouTube on Twitter and they directed me again to making the appeal video. It wasn't what I wanted to hear. I wanted more specifics. I was also concerned about the money I had earned. That they did give me a more concrete answer on, which I appreciate. And also the person I spoke with via the chat, I do appreciate them as well. They didn't make these decisions. That's something important to understand. If a company does something bad, please don't take it out on the people tasked with taking in the feedback. I've worked a front-facing job enough times in my life to know what it feels like. It's not nice. It's not productive. Anyways, I had to make an appeal video. And Google did provide guidelines for me to follow, as well as the instructions to not delete anything off my channel, which slightly scared me. See, because I use clips from movies in my reviews, I sometimes will experiment with uploading a rough cut just to get an idea in advance of what I'll be dealing with. Which meant that at the time I had been flagged as a reused content channel, my most recent upload was a copyright claimed video that was blocked worldwide. Oh god, I'm so doomed. But I pressed ahead, retitling the video to something along the lines of Sometimes I upload rough drafts to see if they're copyright compliant. Just in case that would help. And I began putting together my appeal video. This was also the time I really went through the reused content policy. And I noticed different aspects of it that caught my eye. First of all, reused content is separate from YouTube's copyright enforcement which means it's not based on copyright, permission, or fair use. This guideline means sometimes you may not get claims against your content, but your channel may still violate our reuse content guidelines. I'm going to come back to that a bit later. Second, this policy applies to your channel as a whole. In other words, if you have many videos that violate our guidelines, monetization may be removed from your entire channel. In other other words, this isn't applied to individual videos, it's something applied directly to a channel. That explains why I wasn't able to get more specific information from the support specialists I spoke with earlier. Anyways, following the information given to me, I made my appeal video and submitted it to YouTube. What follows is the video in its entirety. Hi there, 
I'm Daniel Goldhorn with the channel Daniel Goldhorn, found at URL www.youtube.com slash C slash Daniel Goldhorn, or alternatively, URL YouTube.com slash channel slash UC8VZPFEOTU51CVLLOEPGUEG. And I'm making this video to appeal a recent decision by YouTube to demonetize my channel. According to YouTube Studio, my channel contains reused content. The channel uses someone else's content without making changes that add significant value. I strongly believe this is an error, and I'm going to argue my case here. I'm going to make this video following the guidelines set out by Google support. First, include the URL of your channel within the first 30 seconds. I have just fulfilled that. I will be focusing on my channel as a whole and not just individual videos, though I may of course use a variety of my individual videos to argue my case. I will also make sure to refer to the AdSense program policies, show you how my channel follows those guidelines, and then give you visual examples of how my videos are created. Following the link given to AdSense program policies, on top of the other advertiser-friendly guidelines, there are other quality guidelines highlighted, specifically when it comes to repetitious content and reused content. I will focus more on the latter since that's the relevant issue here, but to address the former real quickly, repetitious content refers to channels where the content is so similar viewers may have trouble spotting the difference between videos on the same channel. I feel like looking over my videos, it's clear that my content does not repeat itself. Each video addresses a different topic than the last. As for reused content, the policy that's been invoked to demonetize my channel, reused content refers to channels that repurpose someone else's content without adding significant original commentary or education educational value. The spirit of this policy is to make sure we are rewarding creators for original and authentic content that adds value to viewers. Examples of what's allowed to monetize include, but aren't limited to, using clips for a critical review, a scene from a movie where you've rewritten the dialogue and changed the voiceover, reaction videos where you comment on the original video, and edited footage from other creators where you add a storyline or commentary. Content that violates this policy includes clips of moments from your favorite show edited together with the little or no narrative, short videos you compiled from other social media websites, and content uploaded many times by other creators. With this established, let me now take you on a brief tour through how I create my videos. Each video of mine starts with an idea of a movie I want to talk about. Sometimes it's a new release, sometimes it's an older film. Just something I want to discuss. I then spend a long time putting together a script to discuss what I want to talk about with the movie. Sometimes literal years, as you can see with the revision history of my Grave of the Fireflies review script. These are always fully original scripts that I write myself. Once it's written, I then record my video using a Blue Yeti microphone. If you look here, you'll see a video I took of the equipment I used to record, as well as my computer setup, with my channel's YouTube Studio page pulled up on the monitor for the sake of verification. I then edit the audio down, as you can see me doing with the video you're watching right now, and then I add in the visuals. These visuals include movie clips, like this, or me, like this. And speaking of, I am 100% original art that is commissioned from and done by the talented Ridian Croft, whose drawing program you're looking at right now. Because of his skills, I can do all kinds of things, like flap my arms. See that? I use music either from the YouTube audio library, or I subscribe to Epidemic Sound for the license to use their music. Once a video is edited, I then go over it to the fine tooth comb several times. I look for editing mistakes, script mistakes. Sometimes I go back and rewrite or re-record lines. And then once I feel like the end result is something I can be proud of, I let it out into the world. So all of this is to say that I strongly, strongly assert that my channel being labeled as reused content is a mistake. I don't believe any of my videos could be characterized as mere compilations or re-uploads. My channel does not contain reused content. Thank you for your time and I look forward to your response. After I finished making this video, I uploaded it to my account unlisted and submitted it as my appeal. I was promised a decision within 14 days. I had one within five hours. Woo! Crisis resolved. But the question is, why did this happen in the first place? 
The idea that my videos resembled reused content baffles me. I tried to go to Reddit for advice, which was a mistake. Well, obviously the problem is your faceless channel using copyrighted clips. Of course you don't qualify for AdSense. I'm sorry, but when channels like Nerdwriter, Schaeferless Productions, Cosmonaut Variety Hour are able to follow a similar format and still be monetized, this argument does not convince me. So, why did it happen? The thing is, it's really easy for me to just charge YouTube with being evil. I mean, far be it from me to stick my head out for the sake of a billion dollar corporate conglomerate. But I have to believe that there is some logical reason rather than just trying to stamp out a little innocent movie goat. And I do have a hypothesis. Over the past year, there's been a lot of controversy around React channels. Sniper Wolf, XQC, and others have come under fire for their low effort content, which catches views and attention and subscribers rather than the original creators of the clips they react to. And I agree that this kind of content degrades the internet. At least Daily Dose of Internet, a curator channel I really like, will add his own little comments in there. Plus, he also credits the creators, and has a good taste in interesting videos, and he doesn't edit his videos to induce a migraine. But where does that line exist? When does commentary become so thin, so vapid, that it's no longer reacting, but just freebooting? If YouTube wants to crack down on reused content, they're going to have to answer that question. They can either write out in intricate, painstaking detail every single conceivable scenario, or... They can make a policy that's general and flexible enough to apply to many scenarios. That would explain the vagueness of the official policy. The fact that it can be applied to a channel even if an individual video is incited as violation. It would also explain the clarification that it's separate from a copyright claim. A lot of people who get their videos freebooted don't have the means to establish formal copyright protection on the YouTube system. This policy has given the leeway to act as a tool for a variety of scenarios. Unfortunately, I believe it's been wielded a little too freely. Case in point, me. Running a platform as big as YouTube is difficult. Viewers, creators, and advertisers all have their own wants and needs. But everyone benefits from a platform that is able to successfully incentivize higher quality content. Keeping this perspective in mind though, I still believe there is great room for improvement in how YouTube creates and applies its policies. Let's not forget how only a year ago YouTube decided to demonetize videos en masse based on new ad-friendly guidelines for swearing, including retroactively applying those policies on existing videos. While this was at least partially rolled back, it's still an example of how these changes are implemented. We're given little, if any, warning, and this can and does impact people's livelihoods. There must be a less disruptive way to go about this. There must be a way for us to answer for whatever action we've been accused of before we're punished for it. If I had gotten an email from them that instead said, Hello Daniel, we think your content might violate our policies. Please help us make sure that it's compliant. Then I would have been more than happy to help. And I know that's difficult to do, it's slower, and YouTube's really, really big and it would take a long time. But surely there has to be a way that's less punitive, less sudden, than this. I will give them credit for something, though. I started putting together the script in between my appeal being made, and I went into an incognito tab. I wanted to have a gotcha moment where I'd show YouTube was still showing ads on my videos even when I was demonetized. But it turns out, my videos weren't showing any ads. I double-checked. Other channels showed ads, but my videos weren't showing any. Not gonna lie, I appreciate the restraint. The lesson of this video is not that YouTube and Google are evil. I am not angry at them for what happened, and once again I greatly appreciate the patience of the people I spoke with from the company. But even though I'm not angry, I still argue that changes need to be made. Again, I get it. With a platform this big, it's a necessary evil that human beings are handled by algorithms and rules and automated systems. But these systems aren't built to handle all situations, and there's no one person, no team of people, who can build such a system. Mistakes and errors will happen, and the corporate bureaucracy must then be faced. I believe YouTube needs a system that accounts for these errors, that can allow us to answer for perceived policy violations before we are punished for them. In lieu of a structural change though, I just offer this advice if you're facing a similar situation. I implore you to be calm, to read the fine print very carefully, and use that fine print as you make your arguments. 
As unpleasant as it is, think like a corporation whenever you're dealing with a corporation and you have a greater chance to win your appeal. It had been a bit of a downer New Year's Eve for the channel, but now I'm once again very excited for the future. Thank you for watching. Anyways, I promise the next video is going to be the roughly 30 minute Man of Steel review. I can't wait for you to see it. I apologize in advance to all the Snyder fans in my audience. Hashtag Restore the Goldhorn verse. Goodbye.